I want to start with you, first of all, because the president uh, called your name in Pennsylvania. He said he liked you, but then, then well, yeah, let's hear it again. I mean, oh, I, it, it was it was entertaining the first time. I have a feeling with Donald Trump, it'll be entertaining the second time. So I'm reading Peggy Noonan, and she's a nice woman. I like her. She doesn't like me much, but and she's writing like I'm some kind of a Neanderthal. And I'm saying, you know, I'm really smart. <laughs> I, just, I just, I love when he talks about how smart he is and uh, what schools he went to. So, Peggy, um, first of all, uh, we'll, uh, we'll respond to that. And then I want to ask you something about the Pennsylvania candidate. Uh, Donald Trump is no Neanderthal, uh, but, um, but, but where are we right now with this man who is rushing into meetings and saying, I want to meet with a North Korean leader? Uh, and undoubtedly putting pressure on Republicans uh, to come to a speedy and incorrect conclusion. All at the same time, there's a personal aspect of this Stormy Daniels issue, uh, an upcoming 60 Minutes interview, and a lot of questions raised about the legal status of these payoffs. Uh, well, my first thought when I saw the clip again was that uh, President Trump did go into what was kind of a very comic and funny riff after the section we showed in which he spoofed the idea of being presidential. He said anyone can be presidential. Then he stiffened up and he acted like a robot and the crowd loved it. It, it was a, a very comical moment. Um, I, I actually think he misunderstands something. He says it would be so easy to be presidential. I actually think he struggles with it. It's not something he does because it's not something that is natural to him or that he knows how to do. And it hurts him that he can't be, quote, presidential. What is that? A more measured person, a person who rattles the electorate less, a person who's perhaps a uh, uh, less dramatic, less helter-skelter, maybe more reliable when he tells you how he feels about guns. He sticks with that point of view. Do you know what I mean? Someone who right. who you think is, is a more reliable person. I think that would put uh, many people at greater ease with him, and I think it's not something that, that uh, he has shown in the past, what are we, 14, 15 months in, that he right. can do. Well, and it is something that uh, several of our baby boomer presidents have had a hard time doing. Uh, and in fact, Peggy, it's often much harder to turn the other cheek. It's often much harder to ignore insults from people all around you. It's much harder to show the sort of restraint that you're talking about. Yes, yeah, uh, self-possession. Uh, yeah, self-possession, self being able to keep yourself in and not be rattled by all the external stuff and not always having to be uh, responsive to it. And if you're mad at the press, as he frequently is, don't make it clear you're dying for the press's approval, you know? Someone, right. Tom Shales in the Washington Post once said uh, many years ago when Ronald Reagan's presidency was new, Tom Shales said, Reagan treats the press like they are wild ducks attempting to attack his ankles. He just, <laughs> he shoes them away, he flips them away. That's, right. a, that's a more effective way for a, for a national candidate, uh, for a national figure to act. But, but right. Mr. Trump always makes it clear that they get to him. You know, right. it's and a funny you know, thing. People close to Ronald Reagan who worked with Ronald Reagan, people like you, people like Pat Buchanan said, Pat Buchanan said, Don, uh, said Ronald Reagan never, ever was, was concerned about a headline in the newspapers. He said, now, if some of the conservative magazines like Human Events criticized him, he would, you know, he would be concerned about that. But yeah. he, he, he didn't stay up and I am worrying about what the press was saying about him. And one of my favorite stories had to do with his biographer who went up to visit him one day and thought he was going to have a terrible interview because the top of the L.A. Times, uh, this was the year after he retired, had one negative story after another negative story about Reagan. And he said, oh, my God, the, he's going to be in no position to see me. He goes into Reagan's home, goes to the back porch, and there's Ronald Reagan looking at the L.A. Times, and his face is red. And uh, at that point, he said, oh, my God, he, he's read the paper. I might as well just go home. He's going to give me nothing. Reagan 
folds the paper, throws it at him, has said, have you seen this story in the LA Times? He's like, yes, yes, Mr. President, I have. And then Reagan goes, I can't believe the O'Malley's are gonna sell the Dodgers to Murdoch. And he said at that moment, he got the genius of Ronald Reagan, Peggy, and that is, he just didn't let things get to him like other politicians did. Yeah. And that's why he was able to stay the course for so long on what he believed. Well, you know, Ronald Reagan was, was um, modern conservatism. He was conservatism when it had just come together in its, in its modern incarnation. And it was not fully perhaps understood, but Ronald Reagan did not expect to be understood himself. He didn't hope for that. He had a philosophy, he had stands. Uh, he went forward feeling that he was right and what he represented was right. But he didn't make that mistake people can make, which is to ask to be understood. Do you know what I mean? People will yeah. understand you in time, but don't ask for that. Don't, don't, don't insist they give you things. Be who you are, go forward, stand where you stand. In the end, it'll probably turn out okay. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.